Hello everyone, Andy Serwich here with Altera Software, back with another Altero VM Backup educational video. So today, the topic of the video is going to be centered around off-site backups with Altero VM Backup. And basically, how do you do it? Um, you know, you're you're probably got the application going. You're doing some local backups. Um, you're you're getting to know the application. Now you want to take it to the next step. You want to uh, get some offsite backups out there. That way, if your main location becomes a smoking crater in the ground for some reason, you've got some backups elsewhere that you can leverage to recover from. So the first thing I want to I want to talk about is the Altero offsite server. The Altero offsite server is a small software package that you can get from our website at www.altero.com. Uh, there's no additional cost for this particular software package. If you're licensing all of your hosts properly with our software, you can use this, this offsite server at no additional cost. And it just needs to get installed on a Windows box somewhere. So what I've done in this particular environment, uh, you can see on my lab here that I, I've already got the software installed. It's a very straightforward installation. I mean, it's literally just a, an accept the EULA and a next, next, next type of thing. So very simple. Once you log into the offsite server console here, there's not a whole lot to configure. We gotta configure storage, and we have to configure a, a user account essentially that we're gonna to use to authenticate to the offsite server because we don't want just anybody connecting to it, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click configure accounts, and then I'm gonna say add account. Now from here, I can put, uh, you know, what basically whatever I want is the display name. I'm gonna say uh, ABC user, and username is going to be ABC user. And then you do have to configure a strong enough password. We do have some uh, some uh, some password requirements here. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Okay, my password is strong enough. Okay. And then the next thing you have to do here is you have to actually define some storage that you want to use to actually store the offsite backups. Now, uh, in a production scenario, you'd probably have some storage here other than just the C drive. You'd probably have, you know, a separate volume that's connected to, you know, maybe an iSCSI target, or maybe it's associated with a bunch of different physical disks inside of the machine running the software. Uh, you could even use a UNC path or a network share or something like that at that location as well. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm just gonna select the C drive and we're gonna go from there. So I'm gonna select that, I'm gonna click save, and now I've got my user account that I'm going to use to authenticate to this offsite server. So now I'm done with that particular piece. I'm gonna go over to my on-premises application now and I'm going to configure that offsite server as a offsite location. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to backup locations. And again, um, if you've watched some of our previous videos, you've seen this before. We've got our local backup locations contained in the center column here, and we've got our offsite locations in the right-hand column. Now I'm gonna configure a new offsite location by clicking the Add Offsite Location button. I'm gonna select Altero Offsite Server at the bottom, and I'm gonna click Next. Now here I have to actually fill out this information to connect to it. So I know that I need to put in the DNS name of the machine here. You could use the uh, IP address of the machine as well if you're more comfortable using that. And then I need to go ahead and put in this user account that I just created and the credentials. Now, if I wanted to set up a threshold of, you know, let's say I had a, 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 any virtual machine that's larger than 100 gigs, uh, force a seed to disk instead of sending it across the wire. You could do that here if you wanted to. I'm not going to in this particular example, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. Uh, the other thing you can do with the offsite server is if for some reason these ports on the screen here don't work for your particular use case, you can go ahead and change them um, on the offsite server, but you have to make sure to change them here as well when you're connecting to it from the on-premises application. So I didn't do that in our example here, so I'm going to leave them as is. And if I want to, I can click test connection and it will actually test to make sure that uh, that offsite server is reachable by all the needed uh, components inside of the environment. So you, that was completed successfully and I'm gonna click finish. And now that location shows up as an option in my offsite locations list. 
As far as uh, actually assigning local virtual machines to use that location as an offsite uh, location, it's really simple. I mean, it's it's literally just a click and drag motion. So um, what I'll do is I'll go and I'll find a virtual machine that I wanna I wanna vault off site here, and um, we'll go with this particular machine. So you can see here, please assign a backup location to this virtual machine before assigning an offsite location. This is basically telling me that this machine, it does not have a local backup location associated with it. So we're gonna skip that one for now. We're gonna go to a machine that is actually already configured for an offsite location um, that you can see over here in this list here. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll basically select this MCW01 virtual machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and find that in my list and I'm gonna click and drag that over here. Now you can see that that's under the list. I can click save changes. And now that machine will be associated with that offsite location whenever an offsite backup happens for that particular virtual machine. Now I could allow a manual offsite to occur um, or I could wait for a schedule to do it. If I wanted a schedule to take care of it for me, you have to come in here to schedules and you have to make sure that you configure uh, that virtual machine with a schedule that has an offsite copy associated with it. So if I go down, down through my list here, I can see this MCW01 virtual machine. It is associated with this 4 a.m. every weekday um, schedule here. And I can see by this little cloud icon that it is uh, that that job also has an offsite copy associated with it as well. So we're good from a scheduling perspective. Now, if I want to, I can come down here to take offsite copy and I can manually select that virtual machine and say take offsite copy if I wanted to. Uh, and that would send the initial copy of that virtual machine across the wire to that offsite server, which depending on the size of the virtual machine, it could take a while. I mean, if you have a, you know, let's say you have a, a one or two terabyte file server and depending on your bandwidth, that could take some time. In those situations, Sometimes it makes more sense to do like a disk seed type of thing. So you, you attach a USB drive or some sort of mobile storage platform. You seed that back up to that storage, move it to your offsite location, and then we run an import process. So what I'll do here is I've attached a USB drive to this machine and I've selected MCW01, again, the machine that we are using in our example, and I'm gonna say seed to disk and it'll bring up this, this menu here. So again, I've attached a USB drive. I'm gonna select physical drive, and here I get the option of selecting which volume I wanna select. So you see here, drive G is a USB drive, and I have to select a subfolder in that drive. So I'm gonna say choose folder, and there's nothing on this, this drive right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a folder, and I'm gonna say offsite and create and it automatically selects that new folder for me. I click select, and now we can say seed to disk. So I'll click seed to disk, and now that seed to disk job has actually started. And we can come out here to the Altero VM backup dashboard, and we can monitor this job out to completion. Now what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and I'll let this job run, and then I'll move that disk to the offsite server, and then I'll show you how to do an import process here as soon as it's done. So I'll be right back. All right, that offsite disk seed has completed. I've moved the disk to the machine that's running the offsite server software, and now I'm ready to do an import on the offsite server. So again, this is gonna take that initial offsite backup the full thing. It's going to put it on the offsite server as the initial copy. And then every subsequent offsite backup is going to contain just the changes. So again, we've taken that big initial payload. And then now we're only going to have small bits going across the wire from this point on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the offsite server dashboard again, and I'm going to expand this out. And I'm going to come down here to configure accounts. And I'm going to select the user account that I want to actually import this data for. So you might have multiple sites going to the same location. Uh, if you're an MSP, you might have multiple customers coming to this one offsite server. You've got to select the account that you want to import that data for. So I'm going to select our ABC user here, and I'm going to say import seed. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and read this for uh, different information containing, you know, different information regarding the offsite backup. I'm going to select next. And here you're going to actually select the drive that contains the uh, contains the offsite disk disk seed. So I'm going to expand that out and I'm going to select my offsite directory and uh, we're going to click next. And now here I have to actually select what virtual machines do I want to import to this location. So it's found our MCW01. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select that. And I'm going to say start seed import. Now I can go to the dashboard by clicking this button here and I can actually watch that import in progress. So that pretty much takes care of our uh, discussion today about offsite backups. We talked briefly about um, scheduling offsite backups and taking manual offsite backups. And then, you know, I talked about setting up the Altero offsite server and we showed you how to do a, a manual disk seed so you can move it to your offsite location uh, to get that initial really large backup out of the way so you don't have to send it over the wire. Uh, if you're interested in more educational content regarding our product, feel free to go out to our YouTube channel or www.altero.com. We've got all kinds of great information there as long as those videos. And uh, thanks for watching. <music>